We know why freeze clause exists. It seems obvious. We don't want battles like the one you're about to see take place uh, because they are decidedly uncompetitive. One Pokemon frozen is already devastating. Multiple is just outrageous. Free turns are just the worst thing uh, to give to your opponent. It's why sleep is so exploitable. It's why full paralysis is so exploitable. It's why we don't use Hyper Beam, right? That one free turn after you use it is just going to be too much. So uh, the question winds up being, wait, can you really force multiple freezes that reliably? And uh, is and then on the other hand, it's is this game mechanic uh, worth preserving uh, but through us? changing the way the game is played i.e on a physical game cartridge you cannot block the opponent from freezing multiple pokemon so it is a simulation or a simulator specific tenet of our game you know where do we draw the line all those kinds of things but before we get to any of that i would just like to show you an example of well, some of the most egregious luck you'll ever see so, uh, and why Freeze is so ruinous, of course. So we have an interesting early game sequence where Conflict manages to get to Sung to blow up on his Steelix, which is an incredible way of limiting how threatening Cloyster can be. Uh, it's a risky move, but it really, really paid off. Uh, very well done. And now Nidoking comes in. Nidoking is a massive pain in GSC, uh, and it has sleep in this gen, uh, and no other. Uh, it goes for Lovely Kiss, it misses Umbreon, doesn't matter. Umbreon runs Rest and Sleep Talk, which specifically makes it one of the best Nidoking answers. It just has the pure bulk, uh, it's not hit super effectively by anything Nidoking runs until people start running Dynamic Punch Nidoking, but that won't happen. Uh, and it, you can't get by it with Sleep either. So uh, what makes this next turn, you already know where this is going, that doesn't stop it from being awful. Uh, <laughs> is uh, what makes it particularly awful is that the uh, Umbreon is now vulnerable to an Ice Beam Freeze because it dodged Lovely Kiss. But Tasung goes for an Ice Beam and immediately gets the Freeze. So, now it's not like Umbreon was threatening Nidoking immediately back in return. It's not like Umbreon was going to unleash, you know, a Psychic or Earthquake or Ice Beam or something that else that would hit Nidoking super effectively. But, you know, a little chip damage, charm... Uh, was chip damage with pursuit. Uh, it's just in case Nido King switches out. You know, you could charm it so, so you make sure that its earthquake doesn't do anything. Right? Generally, you are not going to be super threatened. And even uh, even the freeze is not necessarily going to be the end for Umbreon because yes, the defrost rate in GSC is exceptionally low. It's 10% as opposed to 20% in every Gen three and up. But you know, with Umbreon's bulk, then it's not the worst thing to pray for. And even then, if if you lose your Umbreon, then yes, okay, that's terrible. To a freeze. But, you know, it can still be done. Especially in this game, because Conflict has already removed one of Tsung's Pokemon. Uh, plus, GSC has that nifty mechanic where you can actually try to thaw out on a switch. You don't actually have to make a move to try and thaw out. So, uh, as you see here... Uh, Umbreon stays frozen for turn 8, but then thaws out at the end of the turn. So that's an example of how the mechanic works. Okay, great. So, unfortunately now, another freeze is available to Tsung. And he goes for Ice Beam and gets it again. Now, this is outrageous, of course. But, uh, as he's just trying to break through Nidic, uh, Umbreon already. It's outrageous, obviously it is. Especially because he needs the freezes in a very narrow time frame. Because as soon as Umbreon rests then it is not, you can't freeze it anymore. Uh, and you can't even crit your way through necessarily because it can sleep talk uh, rests as well. So uh, this is not necessarily the problem that Umbreon is still frozen, although it's funny. Uh, <laughs> not for conflict, obviously. Maybe now, it's been a long time since this game. Anyway, so then what happens is, uh, so see here, let's just go back to that. So now... Umbreon is in range of two more earthquakes, so he's not going to want to risk it. And Tsung makes the good move and says, look, uh, he's not going to want to risk it and stay in. Plus, he's too KO'd by Ice Beam into Earthquake anyway. I, I, I'm not 100% sure on that, but either way, he clicks Ice Beam again, right? And now Zapdos comes in and also immediately gets frozen. And this is just... Tsung was an amazing player, but he was also known for incredible luck. Uh, and that was... 
an example. So yeah, now he has two frozen Pokemon, and there is nothing Conflict can do to come back from this deficit, even though he was 6-5 up. Uh, and now Nido King dodges, or actually, closer dodges uh, Lovely Kiss and Rapid Spin Spikes away. Amazing. But, uh, yeah, the rest of this game is just, it's such a deficit because Umbreon frozen, and it's not even at good enough health, and it's slow, so it doesn't have as m many opportunities to thaw out. And then Zapdos, obviously, better, but, uh, yeah, now he's just going to take it out with, uh, he's lovely kissing, trying to hit Cloyster on the switch, wow. Conflict is actually stalling out the ice beams and the, uh, lovely kisses, beautifully done, and he gets the spikes up, beautiful. So you can see here how, with these switches and with these stay-ins, Conflict is really just playing beautifully. Look how he's PP stalling this Nidoking, and, uh, it's still not going to be enough, because he has to do so, so much to try and come back, uh, and it's, I mean, freeze. The rest of the details of this game are not really that important, uh, but, yeah, that just goes to show how absurd Double Freeze is. Now, Freeze Claws, wh where did it come from? Uh, because in RBY, then, you never thaw out if you get frozen. So it's it makes sense that, hey, you want to limit this kind of thing, right? And there's actually precedent for it in the games itself. Not in Ruby, Sapphire, and Yellow, or Ruby, Sapphire, and Yellow, uh, Red, uh, Blue, and Yellow, but in the Pokemon Stadium games, there is Freeze Claws. So uh, it's very selective, because in other generations, we don't say, oh, well, this uh, is in Pokemon Coliseum and XD, or Battle Revolution, so let's apply it to Gens 3 and 4 of OU, because we like it. You know, here it was a, a game-breaking, an exception to stop this kind of game-breaking level of luck. And that was in a much earlier time. Nowadays, the question is more, do we need Freeze Claws as a whole because... Or do we want to modify the game from the original? Sleep Claws, at least, uh, which operates in a similar vein, this one at least has some sort of practical basis uh, in, ter in terms of playing uh, the game on the actual carts. And I have experience in this from when I used to play uh, on the in the uh, on Wi-Fi on uh, the Gen 4 carts, and that was okay. If you sleep one Pokemon with your Roserade or Breloom, you simply don't click Sleep Powder again, right? That's simple. And if you purposely put another Pokemon to sleep, then you lose. Uh, and there are exceptions, like if you uh, sleep, if you get Encored and you're trapped, you know, super specific stuff like that. It never came up. But generally, it's easy to tell, like, when you are purposely breaking Sleep Claws versus you sleep powdered into an Arena Trap Dug Trio, and then it switched, uh, with your Scar Venusaur in UU, and then it switched for some reason, and you had to sleep, and you had to sleep something else. Uh, so... Yeah, I, or I guess uh, it wouldn't be for some reason. It would be the Doug Trio was switched into a Sleep Powder, and then they didn't know you were Scarfed, and then you use Sleep Powder again. But, you know, that kind of specific stuff. Also, Wi-Fi was generally not as hardcore competitive. But yeah, Sleep Claws, that can technically be replicated on cart. Freeze Claws, on the other hand, because we would play with standard Smogan rules, and we would always just copy-paste Smogan rules. So Sleep Claws, Evasion Claws, Oko Claws, all that stuff. And Freeze Claws. And then eventually we realized, hey, how do we actually enforce Freeze Claws? Because you can't... Or what, are you just going to not use Ice Beam if you already froze something? You can't control whether you freeze another Pokemon. So we pretty much just, you know, dispersed with Freeze Claws. You, you can't enforce it. Now, if you are just practically uh, trying to make the game better every way you can, then on the simulators, then yeah, of course, go for Freeze Claws. It makes the game more competitive. But I, uh, the question, of course, is where do you draw the line? Uh, and, you know, what else can we edit to, uh, to make the game adhere more to our vision of how competitive it should be? I mean, I'm all for making the game more competitive, but I don't have a perfect answer for this. So all I'm here to do is uh, ask you the question, ask you what you think, and to also present a little history of how we got here. 
So Freeze Claws was present in RBY right from the start, and then GSC, and then it just kind of carried over uh, into other generations as a default. And then when uh, the move to Pokemon Showdown as the simulator of choice was made, then Freeze Claws was removed from, I think, pretty much every generation that wasn't RBY because, oh, well, it's not RBY free, so it's manageable. This was done without consulting the players, by the way, which is why uh, some players uh, who were playing GSC, they were getting double frozen, wait, being like, wait, 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 what, what's going on? Why is there no freeze clause? So, uh, and in fact, there were several threads made on the subject, and before we uh, get to the double freeze from this uh, Smogan Premier League Finals game, a very, very devastating one, then we will quickly look at the first of these freeze clauses. So, uh, January 2016, this was the first thread made, should we have freeze clause? And the, uh, I will link the threads, because I know Cam, or not Camtasia, uh, OBS dimensions are not the most conducive to forum reading, plus, you know, it's uh, easier for you to read at your leisure, at your pace. Uh, but, so I'll link that in the pinned comment, but the general gist is that uh, here's Idiot from Mars, IFM, Hodor, uh, then he was one of the most prominent GSC players at the time, and since you would play on Pokemon Online at the time, uh, Showdown's GSC was not ready, then the SPL GSC players would still play with Freeze Claws, because you could check which rules you wanted to apply on Showdown, it's done automatically. So, uh, yeah, the GSC player base was pretty much unanimously saying, yeah, Freeze Claws. Here's M Dragon saying, yes, it should have Freeze Claws. Why shouldn't it? Here's, uh, here's L Loden, who was not really a GSC player at the time, but, I mean, hey, uh, go for it. Uh, even his breaking cartridge mechanics, that's the whole debate. You know, uh, fidelity to the cartridge versus, you know, the competitive game. And, because uh, then you got to consider the alternative. Uh, this is why it's controversial. Okay, let's say we don't want to break the cartridge mechanics. Do we just allow multiple freezes? Is that really what we want to be doing? Uh, here's uh, Isa or Isa saying, uh, also a GSC player, freeze clause active. Piccolo, freeze clause active. Um, Borat, you know, another defining GSC here, you know, uh, having sleep and freeze as one clause, that's funny, on uh, net battle. But yeah, uh, you don't want to turn it off because it's ridiculous. Pretty much an auto win. If, if you're facing a good player, obviously. Uh, so Jorgen saying, yes, uh, Let's. Oh, actually, Jorgen is uh, one of the people uh, espousing the other view, which is it's not really necessary. So the, here's the next part of the debate, which is, okay, so let's say that we don't want to break cartridge mechanics, right? What do we do about multiple freezes then? Uh, you know, if they are broken, do we just say, you know, are we going to ban Ice Punch and Ice Beam and, you know, Blizzard? <laughs> or... or uh, if they are broken, anyway, you know, what's the answer there? The uh, other argument that comes into play here is no, multiple freezes aren't a problem in GSC, you know, because it, 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 the odds are not great, right? And so some of you might be wondering, wait, can you really summon multiple freezes per game? Uh, is that a reliable strategy? And at the time of these threads, it had not really been explored. And so the answer was no, but over time, thanks to uh, teams focusing more on Gengar and Nidoking and the rise of Jinx, which at the time of this thread was not a thing, uh, then you know, those teams demonstrated, yes, you can spam multiple freezes and get them. And, you know, when you can start forcing it to happen reliably, then it's just too much. It's why, in advance, there's Freeze Claws, because otherwise Ice Punch Jirachi would be even stupider than it already is. So here's Earthworm, who is rule minimalist, and uh, was anti-Freeze Claws. Uh, I, Earthworm is, for me, you know, maybe the greatest. He, he was for a long time. He's still up there, and I respect him greatly, but I really, really hated his opinion on Freeze Claws. Because it just opened up the door to nonsense. And the thing about competitive Pokemon is that you are not... It's not chess, and there, which it does not mean it's not competitive, or doesn't have the capacity to be competitive. It obviously does. But uh, you are playing for a percentage chance to win. And, you know, when you throw in too many low percentage chances, then they stack over time. And you just need that one freeze, or that, you know, that double freeze. So... Uh, the rest of this thread, not really necessary. 
Uh, then there's this one player who says, I don't think Freeze mod should exist in RBY, which is a real minority opinion. Uh, bu -bu 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 Mechanics change, it's our own weird little simulator game. That's the essence of it. So, uh, it's so rare that's not justified. And then there's... Uh, uh, bu -bu -bu sorry, I'm, I shouldn't be reading this as I'm trying to talk. So yeah, there's a deleted conflict post here in which he cited uh, the game we just watched. Uh, actually, on the same day, the replay is February 29th, and then he went into the thread and made went to the thread and made a, a post, which is now deleted. Uh, and then Earthworm's uh, post is responding to that and saying, "Look, uh, going for Ice Beam freezes is a skill in Pokemon, just like when you need to go for a crit or a Thunder Body Slam paralysis, things like that. Which is those are more accepted parts of GSC. Okay, fair. The issue is, does the double freeze overstep?" You know, because we do have Heal Bell in GSC, and you can thaw out without having to move necessarily. So, is it really that devastating? And, uh, yeah. The, and the argument also is the game, the Conflict versus Tsung game, which was shown, is an exception. Because, I mean, yeah, sometimes there are games which are just going to have that absurd level of luck. Where Nidoking just, you know, does that. You know, but, but that's not going to happen regularly. Well, or at least that was the opinion at the time. Like, dude, you can't, you know, get multiple freezes regularly. And, uh, sleep is broken, temp freeze 10% chance with poor distribution. Uh, it's not going to happen all the time. And, uh, it's even a little bit on Umbreon for being passive and not immediately threatening. Uh, so, that's the end of this thread. But then, uh, in... Right after SPL, here's a thread made by uh, Fear, who is, you know, the best GSC player, arguably, and one of the most well-known, in any case, and it's called Freeze Claws in GSC, and it's got this awesome uh, gif of Pokemon Crystal, and he is, this was right after SPL, and this SPL uh, showcased not just going for double freezes purposefully, uh, and, you know, getting them, and that being devastating, as we already know. Uh, that's the game on uh, McMegan game that we're going to get back to momentarily. But it also showed the rise of Jinx. And part of the reason Jinx is so scary is, yes, it's naturally offensively threatening without status, with, or without freeze. But the fact of the matter is, when it's spamming Ice Beam so much, you are going to get freezes so uh, a lot more. Because when Gengar and Nidoking spam I, their uh, freeze moves, that's not stab. A Jinx's Ice Beam is stab. It wants to sta uh, spam it a lot. And a lot of the time, it can go for that freeze and will get it. And then, uh, Fear predicted this very well, that basically uh, you can combine Gengar and Nidoking and spam these freezes. And then, uh, it wasn't long after this, that Gengar and Nidoking Jinx all started being used on the same team. And it was getting ridiculous because what's a natural partner to all these Pokemon? Cloyster. You just throw Ice Beam on your Cloyster. It's stab even. you know, And you just have all these Pokemon going for freeze... And in a freeze clauseless meta game, that becomes a much less uh, a much less reliable strategy because, dude, your ice beam cloister is not going to do anything once you get that first freeze. But you know when you can go for as many freezes as possible, then yeah, just click ice beam, and it simplifies the game because. Uh, yes, it's not always optimal to go for luck, but the fact of the matter is the odds are going to be so good for you that you will kind of get bailed just by going for the luck. The luck is too likely to happen, and that's the issue. So, if you also found uh, the RBY precedent that there was a Pokemon tournament held in 2000 which had a freeze clause. So, uh, again, if you want to read more on that, that was uh, it's on Bulbapedia, but the link is here and I have it in the pinned comment but uh, yeah here's a, another argument GSC was always played with freeze claws it shouldn't have been removed uh, even if the chance is not so high then you know it's a valid strategy all this so uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. yeah the you know here's the part with uh, earthworm that I another earthworm post where I disagree. He says, there are not ample terms for fish for a freeze in the vast majority of games between competent players. This was proved to be demonstrably untrue because of how many opportunities Gengar and Nidoking and Jinx get. Um, so yeah, Vil made a freeze team, but he was using you know, stuff like Articuno and Piloswine, so that wasn't really going... If I remember correctly. But 
uh, yeah, he had mixed results. But now the, the problem wasn't uh, that you had to go out of your way to make a free spam team. Uh, it was that you could slap these very strong offensive Pokemon together, and just by spamming their best moves, you would have access to such a debilitating status condition. And uh, if you want a, t an example of such a team, then I recently made a video called Thief, the team that changed GSC. And that is a perfect example of a team which helped push GSC in this direction of just spamming, uh, spamming the freeze moves all the time. So... Um, yes. So, uh, I will not get into this thread, but eventually the... Yeah, uh, here's Lavo saying, yo, we should not reinstate Freeze Claws. Uh, well, his argument is, if we want to have a situationally relevant pact to victory or removed from a match of ours in the name of competitiveness, I don't think I care for this at all, because... Well, I think that kind of uh, speaks for itself, because, of course, it's a path to victory. That doesn't mean that it can't be uncompetitive, but whatever, uh, no matter. The point of this thread is that the TD team, the tournament directors, they say, okay, GSC does not need freeze claws. That's May 2017. In end of December 2017, uh, you'll notice that that decision was made by the tournament director's team, not necessarily GSC players. And that was because at the time, there was no such thing as old generation tiering. When you had something like the Gen 5 Excadrill Sun debacle, then you would go f to, uh, you would just you know ask some prominent players and kind of wing it. And then we realized, hey, there are are actually a lot of things in old generations that might need you know fixing pruning whatever and so we should have some sort of tiering mechanism in place and thus i propose the old generation councils yes it's all about me thank you so the gsc council decided to unilaterally unilaterally reinstate freeze clause thank goodness uh several tournaments by nintendo japan and the gold and silver are actually manually enforced freeze clause which is uh which shows intent for it to exist in competitive settings so there's that precedent, even though, yeah, so I guess that works for GSC, but it, the broader question is, you know, breaking cartridge mechanics for our simulators. So, um, yeah, and then there was a bunch of other uh, posts in this thread. Why not apply this to all gens? Which, I mean, I absolutely agree. Turn was plays, yeah. Um... Yeah, here's the Arthurum argument, which was, I view the Gengar can fish for multiple freezes argument as a benefit to using Gengar, which is just, I, I really did not care for this either. Because, like, yes, being able to get luck is a benefit of the Pokemon that can get that luck. You know, like uh, any other luck-based Pokemon. Or a disadvantage of using Pokemon that can't touch it. I mean, that's kind of self-evident, no? But, not the point. Thankfully, Freeze Claws came back, because otherwise... Uh, yeah, now we know that it can be done. Sorry, I was uh, trying to... But the, the thread here is just uh, basically doing a skim of what we just went over. So the last thing we will do is going to... Uh, going to finish this game that we saw, the SPL Finals game with a, a double freeze, which was cited by Fear in his thread uh, as an example of how this is actually impacting high-level games. Because the Conflict is Sung game, they were just, you know, messing around, playing for funsies. And this was McBeckham realizing, oh, well, actually, this is viable. And, yeah, the less avenues you want... The less avenues for... The less low percentage avenues for wins to be quote-unquote stolen, I think is generally better for the game. Uh, and I think most players agree with this. So we're going to... This is actually a longer game because we got two very bulky teams fighting each other. So we're going to skip ahead a little bit. And here's... A, actually, here's Cloyster going for Ice Beam. Uh, why does it have Ice Beam? Because you want to get that freeze. It doesn't freeze Umbreon here and it chips it very nicely with Pursuit, uh, limiting its possibilities to do so. So uh, now, slower... Paced. Actually, this is a pretty breezy paced game, but uh, that is not the focus here. Nice roar out of the Suicune to get Pursuit Chip on the Skarmory. Beautifully done by McVegan. Uh, and there's a Ice Beam in return 
on Suicune. Now, Toxic is 100% superior to Ice Beam on Suicune, in my opinion. But one of the benefits Ice Beam has is going for freezes. Now, Ice Beam is also useful on Suicune because it gives you perfect sleep talks against Nidoking and Marowak, which is important. And it hits Exeggutor, it hits Zapdos harder, blah, blah, blah. Toxic is still better. But uh, Ice Beam, if you're going to be using Suicune and getting into long games, then going for that freeze suddenly opens up avenues that you might otherwise not have. Like, to uh, Toxic forces rests, yes, but freeze can bowl over a game like little else, or like nothing else, pretty much. Anyway, so another nice pursuit on the Skarmory. And uh, just even this video about Freeze Claws, you know, showing a beautiful skill on display. Love to see that. Anyway, so we've got the Sleep Talk, and we've got the Roar, Raikou, into the T-Tar, Roaring again, wearing it down, gorgeous play, and yeah, we're going to skip a little, I will also include the replays in the pinned comment, so no worries if you want to watch this game at your own pace, uh, Toxic, mi oh, it was sleeping, there's the Toxic, forcing the rest, uh, Moonlight Umbreon here, actually. Nice double to limit the Raikou. Okay, here's Cloyster HP electricing against the Skarmory. Ice Beam did more. I don't, maybe he was hitting Suicune or something. He Ice Beams and freezes the Umbreon. Okay, that's already devastating. And now, uh, he does... Actually, does he... No, he does keep Umbreon in. But uh, McMegan takes advantage of the freeze to heal up or threaten with Lax. So, uh, cool. I mean, if uh, free, there was no Freeze Claw, if there was Freeze Claws, then Umbreon probably would have been preserved to preserve the Freeze Claws. Maybe, anyway. Uh, I don't know if you can afford it with how weak his team is getting. But yeah, now this the problem is that this Snorlax becomes a major threat because it has uh, fire coverage. It has revealed that. Yeah, it has Fire Blast, so Skarmory can't wall it. And as you see, the Tyranitar is at 38.2%. So it is getting, and it doesn't heal, it doesn't have rest. So it is going to get worn down by this lax. Rock slide, I mean, the miss is bad there, but it's also not really threatening a lot. It needs uh, another dodge, but it's not doing very much damage. It's only threatening if it flinches. So uh, Titar is now out of commission, and then there's a Gengar, which is not uh, immediately going to be threatened by Fire Blast lax, but. Uh, God, I like touchpad is not uh, cooperating. I'm trying to pause it. Yeah, so it's not immediately threatened by Fire Blast Lax, it can, but Fire Blast, you know, he has seven Fire Blasts, and Gengar's not that bulky. Plus, he can switch and force it out with spikes, and well, actually, you can't switch that much, because Umbreon is weak and frozen, but, you know, he can pivot into Suicune and uh, do something there. But yeah, either way, Fire Blast Lax can beat it one-on-one. -on -one. Other than that, then McMegan is really um, in a not-so-good place here, because... Snorlax, not a great answer. Cloyster's getting worn down. I mean, it's in a fine position overall, but you see here the Gengar goes for the Ice Punch and immediately gets the Freeze again. So now he's got the two Frozen Pokemon. And yeah. What's funny about this uh, game, actually, is that I think Mr. 378 still had it one, but he didn't use... He actually chose to use Ice Beam um, on a turn later on where Raikou came in and would have been KO'd by the Surf. Which also, I, I don't remember this uh, part of the game as well, but I was like, if it got KO'd by the Serp, why did it switch? Why did he switch to the Raikou? But that's uh, a while ago. Anyway, so explosions are happening. Um, I guess we must have missed that turn. That's not really the point. Point is, double. Fr this game was pointed to as, look, double freeze is stupid, and it is happening. And, like, the whole point of this uh, Cloister set is, yeah, okay, it threatens Exeggutor or whatever. No, you don't care about that. You want the freeze. And it is easy to pair these high-level Pokemon with each other and reap the benefits of freeze. Because it's not like you have to go out of your way to use, like, I don't know, the aforementioned Articuno Piloswine thing. It's, uh, you have the best Pokemon. You have Cloyster, Gengar, Nidoking, Jinx. I mean, people were uh, using Ice Beam Titar, you know, which is not a horrible Pokemon, in and of itself, but it's also not a great one. You know, Vaporeon, it was just uh, is a Suicune. So, yeah, it turns out when all these high-level Pokemon have access to Ice Beam, you can just stack them, because that's the whole thing. They override other, like, detailed strategy, because it does just become click the Ice move, wait for the freeze. 
You know, and yes, one of the most popular ice moves is Hidden Power Ice. That one doesn't freeze. Obviously, we're talking Ice Beam and Ice Punch here, which is not lacking in distribution. Now, Ice Beam, Snorlax never became popular, but if Freeze Claws had not come into being, you can bet it would have been. So, I guess uh, the final point of this video is up to you. Like, do we need Freeze Claws? Uh, or is it worth breaking the mechanics of the game? Like, and for this argument, we have to assume that Double Freeze is broken. I think that one is pretty... Because in longer games where even, like, let's say a DPP team with a bulky Milotic, let's say, or Latias, where there will be lots of turns to spam Ice Beam and it gets that double freeze, then, or a Clefable, god, you know, going for double freeze, that's just devastating. So let's just assume it is broken, so what do we do then? Do we just, you know, grin and bear it? Uh, say, you know, you gotta learn to play around it like you would an advanced Rock Slide flinch or something? Or do we just ban the freeze moves altogether? Or do we have some sort of complex ban, like only one of your Pokemon may learn uh, freeze moves? You know? Anyway, so, uh, yeah, looking forward to what you all think. And thank you for watching and listening. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one.